What's up everybody, I'm Raphael and welcome to Network Engineer Pro. Welcome to part two of taking a Dell PowerEdge R620 server and turning it into a virtualization beast for network engineers. Now in part one, I configured the iDRAG port of the server with an IP address. And from the iDRAG GUI, I was able to access the virtual console. And from the virtual console, I was able to set up the hard drives in a RAID 5. That virtual disk is now ready for an ESXi hypervisor installation. So what is a hypervisor? A hypervisor is basically a software that allows you to create create and run virtual machines. Now ESXi is a type 1 hypervisor from VMware that's directly installed onto the server. This type of hypervisor is also known as a bare metal hypervisor. There's actually a few ways that you can install ESXi. You can create a bootable USB with something like Rufus, plug that USB into the front of the server and boot from it. You can load it onto the server's actual hard drive from a USB as well, or use an SD card. Um, another way is to use the virtual console and create a virtual media device and actually point it to that ISO. I'm sure there's a lot of pros and cons for each of the options, and to be honest, this is just for labbing purposes at home. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to plug in a bootable USB in the front, and when ESXi actually loads, I'm gonna tell it to install directly onto the hard drive of the server. To make this happen, I need three things. I need a USB stick, which I have right here. I need to download the version of ESXi that I want, and lastly, I need to download Rufus so that I can actually format my USB stick and make it bootable. So I already have ingredient one. The next thing I need to do is download ESXi and Rufus. Let's get started. All right, so I have all the links open to download um, ESXi, and I wanna show you guys this VMware compatibility guide. Now, this is gonna tell you depending on what type of system you have or what type of features you want, um, whether or not um, your platform or your model is supported here. So I have a Dell PowerEdge R620 and under the partner name, I've selected Dell. And if you scroll down a little bit and click through some of these uh, options, you're gonna see different types of PowerEdge servers here that are on the hardware compatibility list. Like I said, mine is not and it's not really a big deal. If you had any issues with it, you're not gonna be able to call VMware and get support. Um, I don't plan on calling them anyway. This stuff runs on uh, regular PCs, no problem. So I don't, I don't think there's gonna be a big issue for what I'm trying to do, but I just wanted to show you guys that. Now to download ESXi, it's free to download it. Um, you do need to create an account to be able to download it, but that takes only a you know a minute or two. So you can see I'm already logged in. My initials are up here, RT, and the latest version is version seven. And if you click this little drop down, you can see you have 6.7, 6.5, all the way down to 5.0. And what I wanna do is I wanna do 6.7. VMware vSphere Hypervisor ESXi 6.7 update 3B. So what you would do is you would just hit go to downloads and then right over here to the right, you'll see you have download now. You actually have two options. You have one that's the actual ISO that it says it includes VMware tools and then you have a zip file for an offline bundle. So I'm just gonna do download now for the ISO and that should be it for downloading ESXi. So I've already downloaded it. I just wanted to walk you guys through the process. Just remember you do need to create an account to be able to download it. So this specific page here where it says product downloads, this is a vendor neutral, like a generic ISO file for the ESXi uh, installation. If you wanted to download something that's specific to your vendor or your platform, then what you would do is you'd come over here to custom ISOs. If you expand OEM customized installer CDs, you're gonna see all different kinds of vendors. So Dell, Fujitsu, Lenovo, HP, Cisco, like all kinds. And these are customized installers specifically for the platform or the vendor of the server that, that you're gonna be using. So I'm using a Dell PowerEdge. I could have used the Dell EMC custom image, but the generic one was fine for me. Just wanted to point that out. So the next thing you need to do is you need to go to rufus.ie and this is the web page for Rufus. And Rufus is going to allow you to create a bootable USB drive. And just like it says here, the easy way. It actually is extremely easy. And this is what it looks like here, the program. So under device, you would plug in your USB drive into your computer and it would pick this up or you can select it from a dropdown. So you select your USB and then under boot selection, what you're gonna do is you're gonna point to your ISO. So whatever your ISO is, a Windows or ESXi. In my case, it would be in ESXi ISO image. Uh, then down here, you'd hit start and then you would be good to go. 
So you scroll down a little bit and you're going to see the download link here. It's going to download and now you have it. There's no need, no need to create an account or anything like that. You just go straight to the web page and you're going to be able to download it. All right, so I'm ready to open up Rufus and get my USB drive uh, formatted and ready. It is plugged into my computer's USB port. So let me go ahead and open up Rufus. All right, so here it is. Now it automatically picked my USB drive. It's a 32 gig USB drive. Um, now here under boot selection, like I mentioned earlier, this is where you're gonna select your disc or your ISO image. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit select. And I have an image here already, but if I go back uh, one folder, I have 6.7 update one, 6.7 update three, and I have 7.0. So what I wanna do is I wanna do 6.7 update three. I'm going to try 7.0 really soon, so I'll probably make another video um, for that, but it's pretty much the same process. So I'm going to go ahead and select 6.7 update 3, and then I'm going to click the actual um, ISO image, and I'm going to hit open. So it's already selected the partition scheme for master boot record, and all of this uh, fields have already been filled out. This is the volume label, so this is what the name of your USB is going to be. The file system and all that has already been selected for you. So you see how ready uh, it's kind of this same color as the rest of the uh, as the rest of the form let's go ahead and hit start and it's saying warning all the data on the device no label that's the name of my usb at this moment in time is going to be destroyed to continue with the operation click ok so i'm gonna hit ok and what it's doing is it's deleting the partition it's cleaning the usb it's completely wiping it out and recreating all the file systems and it's going to copy all the iso files onto the usb drive so let's give this a minute or two uh, for this to finish. All right, so it is 100% complete. When you see this green bar that says ready, it's telling you, hey, that USB is ready to go. That's how you know it's finished. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna hit close. There's nothing else to click, just hit close. And you now have a bootable USB with ESXi on it. We're now ready to take that USB and plug it into the front USB on the server and go through the installation process. Let's do it. All right, so we're ready to install ESX on our server. What I've done so far is I've removed that USB that we just formatted and prepped with ESXi. I removed it from my computer and I plugged it into the front USB panel on the server. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and go back to the iDRAC GUI. So I'm gonna enter my IP, 192.168, there we go, .1.93. And I'm gonna go ahead and get logged in. All right, so now that we're logged in, what you wanna do is you wanna go over here to the upper right where it says virtual console, and you wanna go ahead and launch the virtual console again. So it's gonna let you know, hey, this thing can harm your computer, that's fine, you know what it is. Certificate's not valid, that's fine. Go ahead and run. And it's just letting you know again that the connection's untrusted. Go ahead and run. So what you wanna do is you wanna go over here in the upper left corner and you wanna click next boot. Right now you can see that normal boot is checked and what you want to check is going to be the BIOS boot manager. And a little warning here pops up saying, hey, we recommend that if you do make the selection, you should reboot your server immediately. And that's actually what we're going to do. So I'm just going to hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and go over here to macros and I'm going to send a control alt delete to do a reboot. All right, so after selecting the next boot to be the BIOS boot manager and issuing a control alt delete, the server went ahead and rebooted into the BIOS boot manager. So now what I wanna do is I wanna select BIOS boot menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. All right, so I'm in the BIOS boot manager and what we have here is different boot options and I don't see the USB drive here immediately. What you need to do is you need to scroll down here to where it says hard drive. So hard drive C, highlight that and you're gonna see front USB, USB flash drive. That is my bootable ESX flash drive. I wanna go ahead and highlight that and press enter. So you can see here that I have ESXi 6.7.0 in my boot menu. It's gonna automatically boot in one second to that. You can already see right away that it's loading the ESXi installer. This is exactly what we wanna see. All right, so now we're going through the ESXi installation process. This is the classic yellow and gray screen that you're gonna see with ESXi. All right, so it says, welcome to the ESXi 6.7 installation. Let's go ahead and press enter to continue. Now here's just an end user license agreement. I'm gonna press F11 to accept and continue. And it's scanning for available devices. So now it's showing me where do you wanna install ESXi? What storage device do you want to install this on? And these two Toshibas here, these are my 300 gigabyte hard drives that came with the server. 
I'm going to use those for something else in the future, so I don't want to use them right now. And here is going to be my RAID 5. This is that 1.6 terabyte drive that we created in part one. And then the last option is that is going to be the actual thumb drive. So I want to select my RAID 5, right? That virtual disk. That's where I want to install this on. So I'm going to highlight it and press enter. And it's asking me, what about the keyboard layout? Well, I want US default. The root password, let me give it a password. All right. So now it's asking us to confirm the install. So it's going to install ESXi 6.7 on the virtual disk that I selected in the previous menu. So I'm going to hit F11 to go ahead and install. And now it's going to install. Once this reaches 100% and finishes, we'll come back. All right, perfect. Installation complete. ESXi 6.7 has been installed successfully. All right, so it says remove the installation media before rebooting. I'm going to go ahead and remove my thumb drive and reboot the server to start using ESXi. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit enter. Perfect. Let's wait for this thing to reboot and we should be complete. All right, perfect. The server finished rebooting and it rebooted successfully into ESXi. Um, the important thing here is that you got an IP address from your DHCP server. You can change it to static later if you want or now if you want. I'll probably do that here in a little bit. But now what we can do is we can go open our web browser and point it to this IP address here. This 192.168.1.91. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, your connection is not private, not a problem. Perfect, we're at the VMware ESXi login. I'm gonna go ahead and use the credentials that I created earlier during the installation process. Perfect, so we now logged into the VMware ESXi uh, web page and here you're going to see some information about the server itself you can see what version i'm using um, again some specs about the server power edge r620 16 cpus 127 128 gigs of ram also up here you can see how much cpu you're using and right now it's pretty much at zero because i don't have any vms installed here yet just running esx is using 2.39 gigs of ram and for storage, I used 1.43 gigs for the install. Remember, I didn't install it on a separate USB or anything like that. I just installed it directly onto the hard drive, but I still have 1.6 terabytes free. So that's a ton of space. Now, the next thing you do is you can configure your virtual machines. I don't have any here yet. We're going to do that in part three, but basically you can right click, create a register VM and you follow this prompt next, next, next point it to an OVF or an OVA file, and you can go ahead and start creating virtual machines all over the place. And uh, it's really cool. So like I said, part three of the video, we're gonna go ahead and do EVNG. So I'll see you guys there. Alrighty then, so ESXi is up and running, and just to sum up what we've done today, I downloaded ESXi in Rufus. I used Rufus to make a bootable ESXi USB stick. I then told my server, hey, boot using this USB stick. Everything worked great, and I was able to go through the ESXi installation process and get it installed on my virtual disk. We then logged into the GUI and we're ready to create virtual machines. The first VM I'm gonna create is gonna be EVNG, but that's gonna be part three, so check it out. All right, so I hope everyone enjoyed this video and learned something. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and follow Network Engineer Pro on Facebook. I put all the links in the description. Like always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please let me know. Thanks everyone and have an awesome day.